Welcome to Open Geology. Open Geology is a project that we created to share geology with everybody. It is Creative Commons and has been created by a group of Salt Lake Community College professors. Some of these videos have been funded in part by Salt Lake Community College, but please note that the views and ideas expressed in this video aren't necessarily, uh, don't necessarily reflect the views of Salt Lake Community College. Today we're going to talk about sedimentary rocks, specifically sedimentary structures. So let's talk about it. Sedimentary structures are visible features in the rock that represent the processes that formed that rock. So anytime um, some kind of a process, be it wind or water or even life, is affecting a sediment and that that uh, effect then gets preserved in that sediment and turned into rock, then you have a sedimentary structure. You can also have secondary sedimentary structures where the rock is altered a little bit after it's deposited or even after it's lithified and you can start to get things like lysogang bands and soft sediment deformation. Uh, but we won't talk about those for the sake of this introductory level material. Uh, sedimentary structures are the embodiment of uniformitarianism. Uniformitarianism being the idea that the present is the key to the past. The processes that are going on now um, were likely the same processes that were going on in the past and we can carry forward our observation of today's processes to figure out what the rocks of the created in the past represent. So examples of sedimentary structures and, and these examples we'll talk about today are cross beds, ripple marks, mud cracks, and fossils. Cross beds are uh, diagonal layering in sedimentary rock created by wind or water. Uh, ripple marks are small waves on top of a bed uh, that represent a, a beach or river environment. Mud cracks represent alternating wet and dry environment and fossils represent the remains of prehistoric life. Beds are probably the most important of the sedimentary structures. And by beds, we mean layers of sedimentary rock. And these thicknesses can range from millimeters to, uh, you know, many, many, many meters. Here is an example of an outcrop from Capitol Reef National Park here in Utah. And you can see the different beds in this sedimentary rock. And beds, uh, sedimentary beds, these strata is another term. They are distinguishing features of sedimentary rocks. If you see bedding, it's a good indicator that you're looking at a sedimentary rock. Please note, though, that there are other ways you can get layering in an outcrop, like, like igneous dikes or things like that. So you want to be careful. But bedding is a good way to help you identify that what you're looking at is sedimentary rock. Uh, notice that you have this dark brown bed in this photo, and then some shale overlying that, and then a nice thick bed of sandstone. The plains, the, the uh, flat parts that separate these layers, they're known as bedding planes. Cross beds are diagonal beds uh, created from wind or river blown grains that are traveling over dunes or bumps in sand and as the sand travels over the top of a bump it falls down and kind of piles up into a layer and it does so again and again over time until you get these beautiful diagonal looking beds and this little gif here is kind of supporting that and this this particular bed this guy's standing on uh, you're either looking at it from uh, an interesting cross-section view or it has changed direction a few different times. You get these really beautiful uh, diagonal features. These can be on scales from uh, many meters tall, especially in the case of dune type deposits. If you can imagine a sand dune, those can be very very tall. Or it can be um, fairly small, especially if you're talking about a river type cross bedding where it's only uh, less than a few centimeters in some cases. 
Here are some famous cross beds from Zion National Park here in Utah. And you can see these alternating uh, directions, these diagonal beds in the sandstone. And this beautiful outcrop represents an ancient dune environment where there's a very large desert. Fossils are another type of sedimentary structure, and uh, they are kind of an easy and quick way of determining the, the depositional environment. Here are, uh, here's a shell hash where you have this fossiliferous limestone just chocked full of shells, and it's a good indicator that this formed in some kind of shallow marine type environment. Uh, here's a, a piece of petrified wood and uh, uh, one of the famous Green River fish. So we'll talk more about these later, but just know that fossils are a type of sedimentary structure. They're preserved traces of what used to be living. Uh, mud cracks and raindrop imprints both kind of represent the nice, muddy, flat environment. I'm sure we've all seen uh, uh, mud cracks before in the modern world, where you have these areas of alternating wetting and drying and it creates these cool kind of polygonal lines and features from that drying. And these, these are all over, especially near riverbanks and tidal flats and things like that. Ripples. Here's a picture I took of some ripples on the south end of the Great Salt Lake. And notice the lake has formed with the sand on its beaches, or it could be the wind, uh, into these nice symmetrical ripple marks all along the, the edge of the shore. Whereas uh, you have the same kind of features forming uh, that formed to create this sandstone here. So this uh, sandstone could have represented an environment very similar to this. You can use clues of other rocks nearby to help piece together that environment. These ripple marks can be formed both by wind and by water. And sometimes um, their symmetry can indicate the direction of flow. So that's it for sedimentary structures. I hope you learned something. I hope this was informative. And uh, please do follow me if you enjoyed this and want to hear some more.